Today's scripture reading is taken from 2 Timothy 4, verses 7 and 8. I'll read from the King James Version. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day. And not to me only, but unto all of them that love is appearing. May the reader and hearer of this word be blessed. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The choir sounds much better without me. If Ramon sings good, whole choir is okay. George Washington, you know that he led the army to fight against the British Army for the independence of this United States. His people wanted to make him a king. King George, what a name that he could have. But you know what? He was always driven by the bigger dream. When I say bigger dream, it means beyond his personal dreams. When he finished his second term as a president, the first president, they were asking him to serve one more term, the third term, third time to the president. But he was always driven by the bigger dream, not his own dream. No, America, American president is only for two terms. And uh, March 4th, 1797, he stepped down as U.S. president. He was driven by the bigger dream. Beyond his own dream, beyond his own desire, always he had a bigger dream. How about you? Who, what drove you this year? Your dream or bigger dream? As you know that David was to be the next king after King Saul. But now his situation is not like that. He was running away from King Saul to save his life. On top of that, day and night, King's army was chasing after him. So he was running away his 600 soldiers. You know, Running away at the same time, feeding 600 soldiers wasn't that easy. So he was helping out with the rich people, rich families, guarding them, protecting them from the local gangsters, and he barely fed his army. And on top of all those, two big things happened to him. Number one, his wife, Mihar. King Saul gave it to someone else. Number two, that famous leader and prophet, King, uh, the, the prophet Samuel, died. He lost his wife. He's lost his mentor, Prophet Samuel. His despair, discouragement, disappointment, you name it. And on top of all those, his army helped out the rich man. Rich man's name is Nabal. And they got to pay him. But he says he refuses to pay David and his army. So David got so mad about it. 
on top of all those. Can you imagine that his anger and frustration? And he was coming back to this guy's family, neighbor's family, with the 400 soldiers. Now he's going to kill him, and he's going to steal all his money and whatever he had. When he came to the doorpost of neighbor's family, neighbor's wife came out and said something like this. Let's all take a look at it. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 28, please. 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 28. First Samuel chapter 25, verse 28. Please forgive your servant's offense because she came forward as a woman. For the Lord will certainly make a lasting dynasty for my master. Because God is going to make you a dynasty forever. Why? Because you fight the Lord's battles. Let no wrongdoing be found in you as long as you live. And her name is Abigail. Eventually, she becomes David's wife. When David coming with the worst anger, kill this guy neighbor and the, the man there. Neighbor's wife says, "What are you doing? You're supposed to fight the Lord's better, not your better. Lord's better has to drive you, not your better. Don't become a local gangster." You are the, you are supposed to be the king. Your identity is a king, not local gangster. You are not supposed to eat something down here. No, you are supposed to eat something over there. You are not supposed to live down here. You are supposed to live up there in David's palace eventually. You know? When she said that, let's go to verse 32. Let's look at verse 32. David said to Abigail, Please, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you today to meet me. What is he talking about? Wow! You just have awakened me. I was lost doing my thing. Now you're reminding me again who I am, what I am. And what I'm supposed to do, what I'm supposed to be. I'm here to fight the Lord's battle, not my own battle. You know what? David became a great king because of this woman. Abigail. Somebody's wife. Enemy's wife, actually. Today, this is our challenge. God is trying to awake you. What are you doing? All year long, you've been fighting your war, your battle. How about His? What about the God, the mission that God has given you? What about the, the gift that God has given you to reach out to people around you? What about the Lord's battle? Now Abigail says, you have to be driven by the bigger battle. How about you? What kind of battle you have been fighting for, fighting against? Just for you and your folks? Your, your tummy, your mouth, your appetite?
Everybody has a battle. But today, my, our challenge is, are we fighting his battle? Are we doing his agenda too? David, I want to see the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 8, please. This is the fourth commandment. Okay? You remember that? Six days, for six days you shall labor and do all your work, but seventh day is the Sabbath, but keep it holy. You remember that? Show it, please. Book of Exodus chapter, first, uh, chapter 20 verse 8. I want, to do, I want to remind you what the fourth commandment really is. Okay? And no, no, the next sentence, please. Verse 9. Okay, remember the Sabbath day to keep it on. Look at verse 9. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Okay, there are two words, labor and work. Sabbath commandment is not only about the seventh day. It's about six days too. Hello? Sabbath commandment is not only about the seventh day. The Sabbath day. No, it's about six days too. Six days, what do you have to do? Verse 9. Six days, you shall labor. Labor means you work for your living. Your own living. But the next one is, and do all your work. What is the difference between labor and work? That the labor, like I said, is you labor for your living. But work is out, other than the labor. The work that God has given you. But the word all is right next to the work, not next to the labor. Hello? What about the greater battle? What about the God's battle? What about the mission that God has given you? Why did God save you? Why you are still alive? What has, why God has given you all this to live? For what? I believe, like Abigail, you are called to fight His battle and His mission. Amen? Don't get short-sighted. For, you have to remember who you are. You have to remember what you are called for. Once again, six days you shall labor and do all your work. What God has given you. Not many people can, not many people can say that I, am, I have done all the work and come to Sabbath. Nobody. That's why Sabbath is day. Constant reminder of God's grace and mercy. Hey, let me talk, baby, please. <laughs> it's okay, I'm, jok I'm joking, okay? Pro uh, prophet Elijah killed 850 bears prophets by fire, remember that? And Jezebel, the queen of the, the country, heard about it. And she said, oh, I'm going to do something to Elijah. And Elijah running away for his life. Let's take a look at it. this time first king. 19. 9. There he went into a cave and spent the night he went to the cave to save his life. And the word of the Lord came to him. And God says, what are you doing here? You are supposed to be over there. Verse 13. When Elijah heard it, he poured his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. And then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? Means 
You're supposed to be over there. You're running for your life. You're fighting for your, your agenda. What, hap what has happened to God's agenda? What has happened to God's battle, God's mission that God has given you? So I want to ask you, what are you doing here? What have you been doing here? Only work, home, and friends, that's about it. What about all the people in your community, in your neighborhood, who needs the hands of God? Who needs the reach of God's grace and mercy through you, by you, with you? When God found a place for you to live, why? Because you are the, you are the best one who can reach out your neighbors. You know, God was looking for good parents for two sons, my sons, Jonathan and Jay. Maybe we are the best. That's why he gave two sons to us. Likewise, God was looking for someone to place them in the community, in the, in the neighborhood who can share the good news of Christ. And you are the best. That's why God has given you that place to live there. You have to broaden your mission. You have to deepen, broaden your life. Amen? You are fighting the Lord's battle, so God will give you the forever, everlasting dynasty. Abigail is... Just reminding him, David, what you are called for. What you are to be. And he lost his identity. Who he is, what he is. Remember who you are, folks. What you are. Remember what God says to you this morning. And in all your life. You know what? 1984, there was the Olympics, Los Angeles Olympics. They wanted to have a patriotic grand opening ceremony. And one of the, the biggest ideas was they're going to have the symbol of United States, the bald eagle flying high in the stadium. That was their idea. To make a patriotic and grand opening ceremony. But the thing is, where they can find bald eagle? That's the challenge. It's hard to capture the bald eagle unless you shot them and then they get killed. So it's hard to capture a lie, capture the lie, right? So they gave up capturing the wild bald eagle. Instead, they went to Maryland. There is a a lab for the wild animals and birds, and there is a bald eagle there. Its name is Bomber. But the thing is, this bald eagle, the big bird, was in the cage last 22 years, which means she forgot how to fly. Big wings. Bald eagle, the biggest bird in North America, staying in the cage for too long, for 22 years. She forgot how to fly. So they trained her. Just send her off in the air, you know, send something in the air so she can just jump and grab it. After three weeks, there was too much stress and too much tension, too much falling down on the ground. Bomber died. This boar digger was born as a the king in the air, flying miles and miles with big wings. Does not fly. Because she was confined in the cage for too long. She forgot who she was. Hello? Let me tell you this. 
you 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 are much bigger than you you can do much better than much bigger than what you're doing now let me tell you if god doesn't need you long time ago you are already sleeping but you're still alive hello if you are not needed to live another day god would you God would put you sleep long time ago but you're still alive why? because you are needed and you are called to fight the Lord's battle you are one of the warriors you know you are one of the mighty soldiers for God and for his kingdom amen remember your identity who you are, what you are. We Adventists are pioneers leading the people to God's kingdom day and night. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 9.25, please. 1 Corinthians 9.25. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. What about the medal that you got 10 years ago? You already forgot it. You don't know where the medal is. You and I are called for the medal that will last forever. Luke 21, 34, please, this time. Book of Luke, chapter 21, 34. As you know that Mark, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21 is a chapter of second coming of Christ. Okay? Luke 21, 34. He says, be careful. Or your heart will be weighed down with the dissipation, drunkenness, and anxieties of life. And the day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all those who live on the faith of the whole earth. You got to be careful. All of a sudden when you are so busy making a living, forgetting, making a life. What's the difference between the animals and animals? They go out and work. They socialize with their, their friends. They feed their family. But that's about it. We do more than that. Right? We go out and work, labor, make a living, feeding family, socializing with friends. Is that about it? No. We do, we go, more than that. Book of Ephesians 6.12 this time. Book of Ephesians 6.12. Why do they wear full armor? Okay, Ephesians 6.12. Let's start with verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Why do we need God's power? Why do we need God's mighty power? And why do we need to be strengthened? Why? Put on the full armor of the God. Why? So that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil and the heavenly realm. Why do we wear full armor? Because there's a battle out there. But the thing is, <laughs> our enemies is not flesh. Let me tell you this. Hey, wives, listen to me. Your husband is not your enemy. <laughs> Husbands, listen to me. Your wife is not lifelong ultimate enemy, okay? The one who has boys like me. Your, your boys are not your enemies. 
Maybe mine, but not yours, okay? We are not here to fight. Come on, church. You know, I don't understand. How come church people fight? Why? Our enemies are out there. Hello? <laughs> Your enemies are somewhere there. Not here. Old folks, old men and old wife. Question, do you know what they call this couple live long together? The one who asked was looking for lifelong companions, right? But husband says, lifelong enemies. <laughs> your spouse is not your enemy. Your boss is not your enemy, even though she or she bothers you. You know, your, your, your kids, children, you, they bother you so much. But are they your enemies? <laughs> we don't take them that way, right? We love them even more. You know, dragon is out there for what? Let's look at one more. Revelation 12, 17, please. Revelation, book of Revelation, the last book, 12, 17. Then the dragon was enraged, ang angry and upset at the woman. Woman means church. In the Bible, woman means church. And went off to make a war against the rest of her offspring. We are the product of the church. Those who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus. The one who keeps the law, the one who wants to be faithful, the one who remains to be faithful to God, dragon is angry to fight. Battle is out there, not here. Too much domestic things happening. Too much problems, too many things between husband and wife. Actually, husband and wife, they're one body, one flesh. Remember that, what According to what the Bible says, one body, you never fight. Have you ever seen that these two arms are fighting each other? God has called you for the bigger better. Like I said, David, Abigail said, David, you must be driven by the Lord's battle, not your battle. You must be driven by not small money like this. Big money out there. These little small people are not your enemies. Your enemies are out there. Moabites, Ammonites. They are your enemies. Not your own people. Someone's wife, Abigail, made David breaking. So likewise, we need a constant reminder whenever you drive. You have a signs, right? It's reminding you, oh, how far do I have to go? How far do I have to drive? When I have to get off, right? You need the constant reminders in your life, telling you where you are, where to go, where not to go. And number two, let's go back to 1 Samuel 25. I have two more verses, then I have to wrap it up. 1 Samuel 25, 28, this time. And Abigail says one more thing. 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 28. Please forgive your servant often. For Lord will certainly make a lasting dynasty for you. Let me tell you this. Again and again from the Bible. Your God will lead your life. Let me tell you. Your God will build your life, not you. Hello? If you know and if you believe this, you are not going to be scared. You are not going to be terrified. You are not going to be deterred, downcast, complaining. Because you are in God's mighty hands. No? Do you believe that 
Look at the Bible, what the Bible says. 28. The Lord your God, the Lord will certainly make a lasting dynasty for you. Only when you believe that the God will build my life, you, are, you, don't never, you never get scared. You will never get agitated and disturbed. Correct? You know, in, in Harvard University, there is a geologist. Her, his name is uh, Dr. Rosenthal. He captured about 200 vores, the wild, the field rats. Wild rats, wild mouse. In summertime, he, he said, I'm going to be gone for three months. Just take care of this, the wild rats, because I'm, I'm doing something with it. And, listen to me, among those 200 wild red vores, he painted 50 of those, the white paint on their forehead, and left. And his students, when they, check, when they were checking the, the vores, the wild reds, hmm? they noticed 50 reds has a white paint on their head. Assuming, oh, they must be special. That's why doctor painted the white thing on their head. Right? So whenever they see the, the red with the white paint, oh, you're special. Oh, you're so special. That's it. When doctor came back, those 50 vores or the wild reds were stronger, bigger, better, and very obedient than rest of those. Ordinary became extraordinary. Why? Because those rats were given special attention. Oh, you're special. Ooh, you're special. You are special. Okay? Remember, you are not special. No. Don't ever think you are not special. No, you are special. Talk to the person next to you. Tell him. Tell her. You are so special. Tell her. Please, tell her. Say, you know, like you mean it. Okay? Look at me. Look at me. Don't say like, hey, you are, you are so special. Don't say it like that. Okay? Turn around and tell the person, you are so special. All right, all right, good enough, good enough. This is how the extraordinary becomes extraordinary. David could be one of those, but David became the one because of this awakening his identity done by Abigail. She was reminding him that you were supposed to fight Lord's battle number two. Don't worry about it, whether, even though you're running away. Don't worry about it. You lost your wife. Don't worry about the king. The prophet Samuel died. God will build your dynasty. Amen. And it made him turn around. And one of those ordinary became extra, extra ordinary. Verse 29, the last one. For Samuel chapter 25, verse 29. Even though someone is pursuing you to take your life, the life of my master will be bound securely in the bundle of living by the Lord your God. Hmm? What, what is it? Even though someone is trying to take your life, remember, you are protected by God's hands. Isn't that what, isn't that what David Supposed to teach the people around, but now the other way around. One, the neighbor's wife, Abigail Biden, it was nobody. Nobody made David somebody. But the thing is, we need the constant reminders every day of life. That's why you got to read the Bible. That's why you have to have a prayer life. That's why you got to come to church. 
That's why you got to come to listen to Pastor Kim. Oh, nobody says amen. <laughs> Guang, amen? Oh, yeah, he's, he's the loudest. I love him. So, once again, verse 32. Like one last time, verse 32. David said to Abigail, Praise be to the Lord, God of Israel, who has sent you today to meet me. Oh, God has sent me. You. Through you, I just found my identity. I just found my destiny. I just found who I am, what I am, what I'm called for. Steven Spielberg was given a Lifetime Achievement Award in, in, in Academy Awards ceremony. And he was about to give the you know, speech to respond to the award that he was given. And he says, this, this, all the credit goes to my parents, Jewish parents. Why? When, you were, when I was a little boy, they bought a brand new transistor radio. By then, radio was the most expensive one. Not, not every family has them. I was so curious what, why this little device giving the sound and voice. So I disassembled them. But I don't know how to put them back. The brand new radio is gone. But my folks never got angry at me or with me. Why? Here's the thing. They never wanted to raise their children within their knowledge, within, within their experience, within their judgment. You know what I mean? How could he be so creative? That, that, the, Mr. Spielberg, because, I got creative because my parents led me, even though it's costly and pricey. He, he knew to this, he didn't know how to put them back. <laughs> So when I want to venture something, they always lend me, even though eventually it's going to hurt them, money-wise. I got hurt physically too. So they wanted to make me beyond their capacity. That's why I became so creative, like what I am now. So I want to remind you, especially Nancy and Louisa too, God has called you to become more than what you've been. This year is almost over. Next year, let's remember what has God, what God has called you for. To Him, you're so special. To me, you're so special too. To you guys, you're so special to each other. Amen. Let's remember. George Washington always driven by the bigger dreams, the bigger visions. Not his own visions, not his own dreams. That's why instead of being called King George, even though he was President Washington, they were asking to serve him third, three times. He said, no, I'm stepping down. That's why our United States was, has a good foundation now. God says, arise, lift up your hands. Look far. Don't get short sighted. Look far, far sighted. They are waiting for harvest ready, but we don't have enough workers. Remember that? People are waiting to hear the good news of Christ through you, by you. So let me tell you, you are so special. Let's all stand up for the closing in. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, 
just is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. There of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washing His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior, Lord and Lord. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior, Lord and Lord. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from our home Echoes of mercy This is my story This is my story This is my song Praising my Savior all and This is my story This is my song Praising my Savior all day long. Perfect submission, all is the rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking upon. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior, God and Lord. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior, God and Lord. When Luisa and Nancy are out first, just just give them a big hug and encourage them, please. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, because you became my Savior and my Lord, I have a story. And I have a song. I have news to the world that God is good all the time. And we are here to Lord to live a life for you. Prayer is not asking God to come down where I am. But prayer is going up where God is. Prayer is not asking my agenda. But rather prayer is supposed to be asking your agenda that I'm about to do. Oh Lord, we got lost somewhere, sometime. What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here, your name? God is asking, am I off the right path to heaven bound? Lord, we want to come back. We want to make an adjustment, Lord. We, have to, we want to shift the gear. Oh Lord, we want to have a story. And we want to have a song. All day long. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Holy words, long preserved for all in this world. Every son with us on earth, all of the ancient words in Words of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us all. In this world, where we roam, ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words.